everybody. Hidden Object Guru here, back with... The Night Dog. Uh, yeah, the Night Dog was the star of our this lost episode of Manhunt. That's right. Yeah. The one where the uh, recorder broke as we were recording. Yeah, I think it was a paranormal event. Direct again. Uh, yes, exactly. So, uh, sadly, we did not get a record of you first experiencing Manhunt. I know, this will be like a revisitation, which yeah. which maybe, you know, lacks uh, uh, some of the original uh, pizzazz, but I'm sure, you know, we'll make it work. We'll try. Mm -hmm. Oh. oh my god. You know what, though? I'd forgotten there was a pig mask man, so, you know... <laughs> a naked <laughs> pig mask man with a chainsaw. <laughs> this might might still have a freshness to it. And there's swearies. All right, so uh, what do you remember about Manhunt? Well, I remember uh, that they uh, captured this fellow uh, before, or, well, took him off the death row, and they... Um, they want him to uh, entertain them by fighting to survive in a death maze, and uh, they've threatened to kill his family, his extended family, uh, to compel him to do this. Yes. Yeah, that's what I remember, and it was it was quite violent. And I remember certain things that uh, that, that you told me about it. Um, I guess I'm allowed to discuss the, the oh no, of our conversation. Yeah. Not revealing anything. Uh, oh no, 100. Yeah. percent Okay, yeah, that, that um, your secret shame. Well, maybe not your secret shame. I don't know if it's fair to call it that, but that you. Um, Showed me manhunt and it's gruesome violence. And then after a while, you asked me, "What would I think of you if you were to reveal to me that you 100% totally love, non-ironically, manhunt?" Right? Yeah, that I consider manhunt to be my third favorite video game. And I said, ultimately, I think at the end of the day, I'm okay with that. Okay. You know, uh, I don't really think I, I can't remember exactly what I said, but I, I think I wasn't surprised. I, which isn't to say that I assume you're like a gruesome killer or in love with, um, gore. with gore per se or anything like that. But, you know, like I wasn't like, oh my god, he likes Manhunt, oh, I can never speak to him again or, or whatever. <laughs> and, you know, I see the appeal of Manhunt. I see the appeal uh, and and what's enjoyable, enjoyable about Manhunt. So um, I, I'm going to encourage you to watch the episodes. Yeah. I finally found someone who... 100% disapproves of Manhunt. Oh, fascinating. What did they think of the fact that you liked Manhunt? Uh, disturbed. <laughs> disturbed, obviously. Did they Did they at least kind of, like, understand, maybe? or um... Kind of, borderline. Yeah. But I made the mistake of showing the part of the game where you're murdering cops. Oh, right. So they were, they were like, it's no longer... Because I think that that's, like, one of the things that, for me, is, like, when I, when I first saw Manhunt, you're killing... You know, bad Goons. guys, horrible people, right? You know, who are participating, Goons who are participating in the snuff um, film. So when you kill cops in Manhunt, that, yep. that, I don't think I saw that. Part. You did not see that part. Yeah. Um, are these cops like 100% innocent cops, or are they corrupt cops who work for evil? Well, here's the tough. So what you got to remember is, yeah. and this isn't a big part of the game, yeah. right? Um, but this game is set in the same world as Grand Theft Auto 3. Right. Or, or all the Grand Theft yeah. Autos, right? Now, it's not a big part of the game that it's set in that world, mm -hmm. and it is lacking the childish kind of humor of that. Like, this is a much more serious game than a Grand Theft Auto game. Right. Right? And so, what we've got is a situation where, uh, the cops, it has a... Um, jaundiced eye it cast towards cops. <laughs> right, right. Kind of like Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, um, it's interesting because in Grand Theft Auto 3, they specifically mention Carcer City, where this is set. Uh, that's what Pigsy did to somebody. Oh my goodness. Yeesh. Yeah. Uh, Carcer City as being the, like, the city across the river from this. Mm -hmm. So think of it as, um... New Jersey City to uh, Liberty City's New York. Right. Of course, that doesn't really track with the manual to uh, Manhunt and the, the general vibe of Manhunt, which refers to it specifically as a dying Rust Belt town where nobody lives anymore. Right, yeah. It's supposed to so be it's like possible that some Detroit of the intent... Or Baltimore or well, I, like I always say, Gary, Indiana. Yeah, yeah. Like So it's possible the intent flopped between the two uh, games... Like, that was the original intent, but stuff got shifted a little right. while, while they were making Manhunt. Anyway, so, but that is the mindset of the police. So what happens right. is, you break out, right? You break out, and you go on the run. And this is where things get a little darkish, because 
the oh damn <laughs> see this is why i don't really have that much of a problem with you at this point in the game you oh know, yeah brutally murdering these it's, it's, so. a, it's an awful world yeah all right so the cops are told oh there's a killer hobo running around right all right and because there's this killer hobo running around it's the cop's job to deal with him via you know mm -hmm. and a lot of the cops if you listen to their dialogue are like woo hobo hunt right so they, we know that they are kind of corrupt cops well, um, they are cops who <laughs> are psyched about the prospect of getting to murder a hobo. murder a hobo right and so you, you it's sort of open-ended as to whether or not these are cops who um randomly casually just kill hobos for the sake of like we're cleaning up this town murdering this evil homeless man for no reason right yeah uh or are they just kind of you know redneck jerks who who are yelling about the prospect of killing a guy they think is evil, right? That's you know? the issue. Yeah, so, you don't know. Though there's probably implications they're, they're somewhat corrupt at least, right? But are they oh, so yeah. corrupt they deserve to but die, all of right? them? You know, all of them, right? That's yeah. the thing. And like, and I would say the section where you are killing cops indiscriminately mm -hmm. is the most morally <laughs> difficult part of the game. <laughs> this is what's funny about video games as an art form, if you want to follow them in art form, I guess, right? Is, I think it's fair. To, they, they are... They've earned it. It's complicated. I mean, <laughs> you, you we're, we're not calling basketball an art form. No. We're not calling playing gin rummy an art form. No. We are calling manhunt an art form. Yeah, yeah. But there's a degree so, to which, you know, artistry has gone into to making this. So we'll oh, call absolutely. it that or whatever, In a way right? that, and you could say, well, isn't it an artist who made the playing cards? <laughs> It's more it's more layered and complicated here because the yeah. art on the playing card is not relevant to your game. E exactly, only your experience your of gin rummy, yeah. really. Yeah, you could have. Have I shown you? And by the way, here's here's where I immediately use uh, lose all of my attempt to talk about art. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, uh, did you see what it looks like when I blow a guy's head off? <laughs> Please do that. Yes. Well, there you go. You know that is a kind of art. Oh my goodness me! But Isn't that um, terrifying. That's awful. That's <laughs> just. All right, I got like killed a, immediately. Looks like ham. Anyway, that's you, know, you were making it a point. Uh, anyway, um, sorry for interrupting. Yeah, um, I guess one of the fun, but video games. Yes, um, video games, art. There's this extent to which you know you're judging it as. Um, just this, you know, fun. If you're just judging a video game as like it's this fun thing that I play, and it, you know, it's it's no different than you know, like no nobody questions the morality of let's say when you go when you would go to those old Wild West. Um, shooting gallery things at a, at a county fair where, you know, people scroll across the screen and you shoot some ducks or you shoot yeah. a bandito or something like that. No one's, like, you know, really, like, you know, parsing... You might, you might well, for a point of being ironic and funny. it depends how racist the depiction depends, of the bandito is. It depends. Is. It depends. But the point is, um, barring that level it's of analysis... Guy yes, it is. So, barring that... Because it's not particularly narratively deep or whatever, right? But with a video game, right, there's like, um, as time has gone because by... Because there is content. There's more and more of this engaging narrative. And like, at one point, it was it was, it was confined to things like instruction manuals, but you look at something like Chiller, right? Yeah. Oh, Where Chiller, Chiller it's clear that the, the narrative of Chiller is that you're a torture porn freak who's yeah. murdering people being chained up in a basement, right? Like, the action is so clear, um, you don't need context. Yeah, and then they, they try... the actual actions you're, you're performing in the game speak for themselves exactly yeah even with that simple level of graphics and they, they tried to provide um a kind of a layer of like fake narrative like where they're like oh you're hunting ghosts <laughs> clearly not not what's going on you're, not... you're clearly a torture monster yeah and the ghosts of the people you've killed are trying to get you and you're defending yourself <laughs> that is the obvious plot of the game chiller but if this were just a game where you were running around shooting people in a gruesome way yeah i don't know would people be more or less um, would, you know, what would the approval be of this game? Would people, like, if it was completely stripped of context and it's just like a psycho is killing some people, who are they? Who knows, right? I think um, it would be. I think it would be re regarded as more awful. Yeah, more I think awful. It would. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering out loud, kind of. I don't think I was going anywhere. No, but I mean, you're, but, you're allowed yeah. to. I, I'm here to ask you to. <laughs> We're bouncing ideas off of to, walls to interpret here. this game. Yeah, yeah. But the so, you know, video games have, have raised, you know, like, kind of like, I guess what I'm saying is when, when there's a narrative involved. Oh, I forgot that my um, shotgun has a flashlight on it, so when you aim it, the game doesn't let you turn the flashlight off. So when you aim it, you oh, automatically you are, yeah, they alert the guys. Them, yeah. yeah, that's, that's um, What I'm saying is when there's a narrative involved in a video game, you'll there's this kind of notion that it's like, well, if you're engaging, you're playing as the character, are you approving of whatever the particular narrative is that right. he's going through or whatever, right? Whereas if there's like a kind of a zero narrative video game, it's like you're just controlling an inanimate Oh, thing. I see. You know what I mean? And, I, and that's what I'm saying. Like maybe like, so, um, yeah, does like it was with shooting, through? shooting, you know, ding, ding, oh, I shot, you know, some right. cowboys and, But whatever, at what right? point does the, the thing you're doing mm -hmm. become so abhorrent <laughs> that like in Chiller... <laughs> You are forced to add a meta narrative to it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, where you're you you are engaging yeah, with the character, and you're you know, I, I 
improving. Like, I mean, you look at Grand Theft Auto, right? Grand Theft Auto, I mean, depending how you look at it. Yeah. Um, maybe worse than this, right? Because it's like, you look I at, you know, the stuff, the stuff that, you know, I'm thinking specifically of San Andreas, right? Where the, the one I always come back to with that is where, where CJ... Yeah. Maybe I mentioned it the last time we played this, I don't remember. But well, we're, there's we're, no proof of it. No, we don't know. So. But CJ um, uh, murders uh, a guy for whistling at his sister. No, um, because he, sorry, the guy who the worked con- Yes, him. yes, he murders the foreman. He murders the foreman yeah. because the construction workers whistled at, his, whistled sister. at his sister. He decides that the foreman should die by being... <laughs> buried alive in an outhouse and covered in concrete dying in a sea of his own feces in, in and i think darkness. that shows i mean if you want a single mission that says grand theft auto series is not a serious thing for adults yes but rather for people to to be best enjoyed by people with an arrested development view of comedy and the yeah. world yeah I think that mission might be the best way of proving that. Yeah, and so in in a certain sense, it's like, well, you know, morally, how do you feel about that on the one hand? Because on the one hand, it's so boring that it's just so stupid that yeah. it's like you, you kind of write it off, you know what I mean? It's not of like, course. you know, we're really... It, you almost wonder if it's even really meant to have happened within the kind of greater narrative. Like, you know how there's, like, stuff that happens in the story. Oh, where yeah, it's like, like how he spends the entire game afraid that Officer Tenpenny <laughs> is going to frame him for murdering a cop, yeah. but he also murders 800 cops. Yeah, that he murdered, like, 800 cops and that he broke into Area 51 and had a space jetpack adventure, but... Oh, but don't, but don't you get it, Night Dog? Um, uh, he was being covered up for by James Woods. Yeah, I was about uh, Couldn't that. James Woods weigh in on the whole Officer Tenpenny situation? Evidently, no, that's the power that a oh, Los no, no. Angeles cop will. I, I want to point out that James Woods will cover up for killing every everybody in area 51 and the hundred mm. cops you have to kill in his missions but he won't help you out with the <laughs> officer 10 penny situation until you've done that uh, those other jobs and that's the thing is it it has a narrative that is so weak and ill held together in, in such a way yeah that when you look at it and you you, you want to subject it to any kind of serious analysis you're like well it's just a cartoon right it's just a silly stupid cartoon it would be like complaining about a cracked parody of a movie or something <laughs> like that right like not even a mad parody a no, cracked, cracked parody. parody i wanted to remind everyone that cracked used to do that before it, was, well, it used to be a magazine yeah an online series of lists so. yeah it, was, it is now just list funny list to the website yeah yeah which it's is like, fine uh, but you know we already have click hole for that that's true although i guess a click hole is parody whereas they are just trying to do yeah. funny takes on reality. That's, that's I, I guess, fair. Uh, so. By the way, the thing, I'm sure everyone on Earth has complained about this already, but aren't, aren't you just dead sick of, like, the clickbait on the internet where it's, like, a list of something and it's, like, ten celebrities who murdered a guy or ten celebrities who ate a kid or something, right? And then it'll be a picture of a celebrity who totally didn't do that and, like, everybody knows didn't do it. It's, like, ten celebrities who killed themselves and it's, like, Dave Melissa Coulier. McCarthy. Yeah, yeah, and it's like no. Honestly, I have yeah. I have been I have gone through like six months now of constantly seeing the side of thing like <laughs> Melissa McCarthy is dead. Yeah, yeah. Click I, here. Like Sylvester no. Stallone is dead. Yeah, Click could, here. I'm like he's definitely not dead. I'm not clicking there. Did Melissa McCarthy like recently like famously leave that TV show? Yeah, she so was that's on? what they mean. Because I kept the saying it's like no one ever had a chance to say good. Bye. <laughs> Melissa like, McCarthy. Phrasing it like that really Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. And it's really... Different. And I don't know how they're justifying the Stallone one. I don't know, but they don't even care because those, those click make things, they don't matter. They, they... So, fun thing about this game, uh, once you get an automatic weapon, an assault rifle, or a machine pistol, it's, it's basically a cheat code for the shooting segments. <laughs> it just becomes a... You are going to be blown away shoot, by how easily I murder the H out of these people. Wow. I keep forgetting how to press run because I've been playing Resident Evil. Oh, yeah. And the run is the A button, and here, shoot is A button. So, it's very bad. Oh, there's two guys there. But uh, what those two guys don't know is, I have an assault rifle. Ooh. Get him. There were three guys. Uh, but anyway. See, you're on board with the get him. <laughs> well, they're awful people. I mean, they... they, they... These are the Cerberus goons who yeah. work for William Starkweather. Yeah. Uh, running his... Helping him run the... Uh, the PAs to his snuff film organization. Right. Shh. Hey, buddy. Right. <laughs> now you're dead. Yeah, so as I said, it's like, this, is, this isn't this is really, like, the, the actions of this character are far, far, far more morally justifiable than, like, Trevor or really any of the characters from, like, Oh, no, Trevor's Autos, a million you know? times worse than right. James Earl Cap. But it's like... If there's any leeway given, I know plenty of people are always angry about the Grand Theft Auto games or whatever. Right? I mean, but, I know it's but, it's a it's a tradi- it's an obvious borderline to uh, 
to to draw, but Trevor is a rapist and serial killer. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. He's this a horrible, guy, horrible guy. He's, yeah. he's a monster who. What did this guy do? Do we ever find out? No. Part of the interesting thing about the game is we never find yeah. out why he was on death row. Yeah, like we don't even know. Like, like at, they could, if they wanted to, say he was innocent. We don't he know. Been framed. It's completely we don't know. up to you to fill in the gaps. I guess that's right? that's for you, the audience, to decide. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the things I enjoy about the game. Yeah, I mean, he seems to care about saving his family. I mean, yep, that doesn't he necessarily did. mean... And then they all got killed anyway. A good man, per se. I mean, he Which, can still be an awful BT man. Dubs, but... a spoiler alert, they all yeah. got killed anyway. Wow. That's it's a... very upsetting. Yeah. It's actually a very upsetting Is part any of the game. Is there humor significance in the game, or is it pretty is much what? dead serious? There is no humor in this game. No, yeah, so it's... it's there that's... is no comedy. This is not Grand Theft Auto, uh, where they expect us to take seriously your moral crisis, mm. and then have a beer whose ad is a woman pissing into a bottle <laughs> so yeah okay. and by the way that is that that line there is why i, I got happened. death threats yeah for my review of grand theft auto 4 oh really oh wow because i were... specifically said how can you take this guy's moral conflict whining about how he doesn't like murdering people when that is the world he lives in? i i, I live in a confused reality because i think i've created this like weird defense mechanism in my brain where i think that like everything that i like even find like even like a fraction of remotely questionable yeah. i assume is sarcastic <laughs> and so like <laughs> everything in the world i've like just come to assume was sarcastic to the point that i'm it's like that thing they said on the simpsons years ago like dude are you being sarcastic i, I don't I even, don't know, even anymore. know anymore uh, and there's so many things that i and i it's almost like i feel like that happened to people like that happened right. to like everybody because like when i first heard about you know here there's just a small example was when i first heard about bronies Psst. <laughs> Psst. Psst. Why? I love that so much. I thought that that, they were that was just a joke. And I was like, oh, it's, it's obviously a joke. Yeah. And then people were like, no, it's not a joke. It's not a joke. And to this day, I still hold to the idea that it's some kind of joke. And then people got confused and thought it wasn't a joke. Right. So people and maybe that is reason the case. Like, people were like, they're so sarcastic. Look at me. I, 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 love, I love my little pony. <laughs> my little pony. <laughs> Don't you get it? I'm a man, and I love my little pony, right? And I, I assumed that that was the case. I'm so edgy. And that, and that maybe, like, it was, like, 99% that, and then there was, like, 1% crazy people. And they were like, and they all jumped in, and maybe then the 99% of, of people who were being sarcastic left or something, or right. I don't know, right? And all that was left was the crazy people. <laughs> the crazy who people. Who the 99% had convinced bronying was a thing. Yeah, and, and so... So, Luckily, we don't really have to hear about bronies anymore. No, and so I thought, though, that, that like, with, with the grandfather, when you're telling me that you got death threats, I'm like, there are people out there who actually think it's not to be well-written? Yeah, there are people <laughs> who think Grand Theft Auto games are well-written. They believe that that... Because Grand Theft Auto V has a lot of the guy whining about feeling old. I see. I just... I, I always thought that it's like they felt there needed to be kind of like this weird like kind of layer of like semi-realism, but then mostly it's a joke or something. Like, that's what I assume yeah, I mean, Rockstar see, thought. Yeah, I mean, Rockstar, it's still a world right. where all of the um, the armored cars yeah. have group sex written on the side of Yeah, them. exactly. Everything about the game would lead to Yet it's to a believe. world where the main character of the game spends the whole game whining about feeling old and having marital problems. See, because I, I didn't even put that on Rockstar as, like, that, like, being indicative of... Well, I guess I complain about it, sort of. But, you know, of them being, like, you know, total hacks or something. I was just like... Well, this is what they think needs to be there to kind of like carry you through the game. Just like it's kind of a narrative cliche that you need this stuff or something. Right. And then everything else is like, haha, we're so funny. What, look at what dicks we are. We're saying rude and dirty or racist or whatever things. Yeah. Ha ha ha. Right. And and so I, I assume that that's how you're judging a rock star game. That it's like. I, I don't have a lot of evidence yeah. to support this, yeah. but I think that the people making these games yeah. think that the Grand Theft Auto games could be taken seriously. That's... I mean, it's, like, it's again, bizarre to I, say I'm I might be living in such, like, a, a mental, self-designed mental bubble or something, right? That it's like, I can't accept that or something, right? right? But it, it could be totally true. It could be no, totally I mean, true. It I is, it is tough touch. to accept. I'm not going to deny that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, totally. It could be, it could be true. So, um... Yeah, but but anyway, but this has no traces of sarcasm, right? No, this means it. Yeah, one hundred percent, start to finish, manhunt means it. How about so the the internal logic then um, of this as versus let's say Grand Theft Auto? Do you feel like you enjoy the game? Do you feel that like most of what the character does like holds up logically and everything? Oh like, yeah, yeah. There's because he is only ever mm -hmm. there are no open world segments. Yeah, he is only ever fighting for his life right. against. Ooh, uh, like a uh, multiple shadow effect. Like, look oh, at the, what the shadow's doing on the oh, stairs. Oh, yeah, neat, neat. Yeah. All right. Um, nice touch. Anyway, 
uh, yeah, because he is only ever fighting for his life, his actions are internally consistent and justified. Right, it's just straight through a linear. Kind and of thing. more There's importantly, no... remember how like San Andreas keeps trying to convince you that CJ is a great guy. <laughs> yeah, CJ's the man. And you're like, and how he's a cool dude, and he's yeah. just a guy who's dealing with all these problems in his life. Mm-hmm. He's really a good dude, right? Right. Like this has none of that. <laughs> no, you you just... don't know who James Earl Cash is. Uh-huh. All you're seeing her are his actions as he is put into this extreme situation. That's very interesting. It can go both ways in how you kind of feel about the game or whatever, right? Or in oh, several exactly. ways, I suppose, right? And it's uh, <laughs> James Earl Cash. I mean, the name suggests that we're meant to think he's guilty. Oh, but, I mean, no. that's just what the media would call him, right? If it were told his serial killer middle name, right? You know, oh yeah, old yeah. joke, right? So. Or I mean, he's specifically named after James Earl Ray, the man right. who killed Martin Luther. That's right, yeah. Ooh. Wow, that's a bit of a, you know, um, contentious choice to have him named after, you know... Especially since guy. you actually fight white supremacists in the game. Oh, it's ironic. <laughs> but, and I was going to say you're a skinhead, Yeah. but it, you might say, well, was he really a skinhead or a shaved head? Yeah. Ah, he was going to get lethal injection, though, oh, so they didn't have course. to shave his head. Yeah. He might actually be a skinhead. Oh, you never know, right? Yeah, there was no, uh, there was no death <laughs> chair. I mean, we can paint whatever we want on this guy. He might have had to do that simply to survive within the exactly. you know race gang environment of prisons. He might not have been a... You know, legit racist or whatever. It's all there's a right? lot of content here. Like, there's yeah. a lot open to interpretation. Here. Yeah, you think that that gives it? You know, that's part of what you like about it, or it is. Yeah. It is because um, Manhunt Two, which uh, you'll be seeing the beginning of, mm-hmm. uh, because of the problems we had with your recording of Manhunt. Right. Uh, I want you to be the first one to play Manhunt 2 with. What he's subtly saying is when we recorded it, I was stone drunk. That's <laughs> that's the real reason it couldn't be used. I yeah. was going I off was, on I was dancing around that very nicely. Distasteful rants about the Polish and my feelings towards them. And, uh, yeah. They're not positive feelings. <laughs> I'll, I'm just going to say that. I'm offering no yeah, details. Let's yeah. just say they're not your feelings towards the Polish leave a lot to be desired. I, to be fair, they they were under the influence of Dan Aykroyd's Crystal Skull vodka, so you know <laughs> I can't be blamed for my actions. So uh, I, all right, I believe, I believe is how that legally works. I think. Oh, one hundred percent. With right. specifically that brand of alcohol. So yeah, it's it's a get out of yeah. racism free card. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> all right, here, check out this one. Oh, oh my. Goodness me, what was that you just stuck into him? Sickle. Is that a sickle? Yeah, okay. A sickle. Or a scythe. Perhaps a scythe. Uh, it's, a, it's a reference you will not get uh, no. for another year and a half, people. <laughs> it is a sickle. It's a, it's a joke about a sickle or a scythe. That yeah. to, to you, the audience hearing this, don't even know that that's a joke. <laughs> I think the general humor of it is still there. Yeah. You know, that, you know, that people sometimes we don't know which too. is which, right? Sure. Or at least Some we people don't. do. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it goes to context, mm-hmm. and I actually find the morality in this game of your actions to be among the most defensible video game mass murderer murder yeah. I've ever encountered. Right. Just because the guys you were fighting have specifically elected to um, take part in a snuff film. Sure, you know, it's not like... How can their lives be anything but forfeit if they've chosen <laughs> to be the stars of a snuff film? Yeah, and I mean, I often say that um, when I'm when I'm crafting morbid gamer articles, which mm-hmm. I should I should start doing morbid gamer videos. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be People great. like videos. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I often say that the value of a mercenary's life is is zero, right? Because a mercenary has chosen to kill and be killed for money. Yeah, exactly. So their life no longer has any intrinsic <laughs> moral value. Yeah. So killing a mercenary is neither a moral nor an immoral act right. within this framework I've constructed right. because they have chosen to monetize right. life and death. Would you uh, find it, you know, that it'd be like a gray area if they were some kind of like quasi-moral mercenary who like has many caveats before they go oh, out yeah, into the world? Like, you know, will not kill I children, only, blah, yeah, blah, exactly, blah, blah. yeah, 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 right. Um, yeah, but I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm gonna say that case, is a better right? person. Yeah, I, I would argue. I'm not saying mm-hmm. all mercenaries are good or bad people. Yeah, I'm just saying that killing a mercenary is not a moral or immoral act. No, no, they've already put in and of itself up. because yeah. they have entered a world mm-hmm. where human life is quantifiable as cash. It's not business, it's personal being the, the exactly. that we're thinking like that's, that, that is a yeah. perfect phrase. I don't know why it took me so long to get there. Thank you. <laughs> hey, hey, so I'm glad you're here. I'm only so I often me. say when the villains in games are mercenaries, mm-hmm. there is no, there is no downside, there is no moral downside to killing them. Yeah. Right? Uh, I mean, and the only morality comes into 
who is my character? What is his motivation? Yeah, yeah. By comparison, killing a police officer, we live in a uh, uh, we live in a society with laws. Mm -hmm. Those laws have to be enforced. Sure. We agree to certain precepts to to get yeah. by in the world, and killing a police officer is an act against against civilized society. Right. Yeah. You would only justify it in a game if it was abundantly clear that they know, were they, bad. They were exactly. Evil cops and effectively at four. That's what I'm right, saying. To be called the officers of the law or whatever. Right. You know, exactly. Right. And killing innocent bystanders is pretty much always a horrible act that yeah. makes your main character a horrible person. Right. Right. So like the the amount of people you run over <laughs> just by being a bad driver in Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Yeah. Just that makes most Grand Theft Auto players the worst serial killer in human exactly. history. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Just because they're bad drivers yeah. who don't care and, about human and life. And this is the funny thing about video games, right, is like, we all, we've all played Grand Theft Auto, we all, you of know, course. like, let's say we, we attempt to project some kind of, you know, we, we, for whatever reason, care, we attempt to project some kind of, uh, um, you know, reasonable morality. <laughs> As yes. much as you can, which you're forced eventually by the narrative to not be a moral person in pretty much every Grand oh, Theft Auto game. Oh, 100 you can. But let's just say we're even not even talking about Grand Theft Auto, but just some similar game where there are bystanders, right? You try to avoid killing them, but you might run over a few by accident, and you're like, oh, geez, in theory, if that were real, I feel bad about that. But you can pretend that kind of within the narrative that you're playing, uh, that didn't happen, right? Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, where, whereas, uh, I forget why I was raising the issue. <laughs> anyway, I guess just things you're meant to feel bad about when you're playing a video game. Yeah, and whereas in Grand Theft Auto, yeah. like, there are things that are in the narrative. There yeah. are stomping people to death. There are, like, uh, Trevor brutally murdering his friend's cousin and the cousin's girlfriend. That's right, yeah, yeah. Like, he, there are him torturing mm. people. There are him brutally, kill, like, killing people. Ah, oh, here we go. Mm. So we have to kill the commander. Yeah. But, uh, we would rather do it here than when he gets to his private room because he is much harder to kill in his private room. So, try and kill them all as they come through the door. Here all it right. comes. Time to get him. Oh, I... Get, get him. Oh god, he didn't die! Dang it. Better get reload. Away. Still got 30 bullets left. He's coming for me. Ooh, get him. Alright, he's dead. Alright, uh, nice. the rest of the guys, we can handle piecemeal. Mm -hmm. What matters is that, uh, oh, we don't need the health yet, actually. That's the evil billionaire up there on the wall. Um, uh, Starkweather, yes. Uh, he's oh, he's Starkweather? His name is Starkweather. Yeah, Starkweather. Yeah. Starkweather, of course. Yeah. Uh, no, and, of that and that's actually. an interesting point of view on it. Like, yeah. there's, there's, we can assume, uh, and I mean, the whole point of the Morbid Gamer articles is to act as if you are doing all of that killing. <laughs> yeah, right. Because I say, okay, honestly, in a common, and I'm not, I'm not playing the games as a mass murderer, I'm not playing the games as a psychopath, mm. but I'm saying, if I were to play this game in a normal way from start to completion, yeah. how many people would get killed? Right. How many people would I kill? <laughs> Beginning to end to playing the whole game, Right. And that is that is what our analysis and what to analyze, mm -hmm. uh, offer analysis of. What does that say? What does that mean? What does this say about the character you're playing as? What does this say about the world of the game? What does this say about you for playing the game? Right. Like that's that's my concern. That's what the morbid game is for. Right. We destroyed a camera, so they're going to send reinforcements. Uh, and our goal is to get See, to the save point that, before we die. Uh, perhaps our problem is we we care about stories, right? We do, Okay, yes. I don't want to be, like, pretentious or anything, but it's true. You're we care about little, stories, you know? And we, that's why when we go see movies, we're like, oh, that was stupid, that didn't make any sense, Why right? did that character do X, Y, or Z? And we kind of care about that, but... And I don't want to be, like, elevating us too higher, but I think that, like, okay. most people, or at least a lot yeah, of people... A large percentage. Let's say it's got to be at least a minimum of 30% of the populace. Okay. And I probably is higher than 50, but okay, whatever. Anyway, Our, can I Can really I suggest care. what you're saying? Our... Yeah. Um, passive viewers or something like that. Well, like, not, not passive viewers, yeah. but engaging with fiction on solely... This is going to be a... I don't mean it in a bad way. Hedonistic terms? Yeah, yeah. Like on they, the like, feelings that it creates at them in the moment. Yeah, yeah. It's like when, when you're... Oh, this guy's dumb because he only cares about the explosions. Like, that's how people yeah. are feeling about things, right? And so it's not even necessarily that they are morally abhorrent people and, oh, we're so good or something, right? No. It's just that they don't... See, that like when people complain, if you go, oh, the, the game was, you know, bad, they think that you're saying, oh, let's censor the game and, you know, prevent people no from playing games play the game shoot Wires people or whatever, right? So it's just that they're not even really thinking about it <laughs> in, yeah. the, in those terms, in terms of the narrative, they don't really care. Um, and they don't kind of bother to kind of chop it up or something, I guess, or well, whatever. Well, they don't right, offer, way. analysis is not part of their experience with the game. They yeah. do not, 
they do not stop and try to, and I don't want this to sound like an insult mm -hmm. because that is not what we're trying to say. Yeah. Even though we are, we are literally <laughs> two college-educated, pretentious people <laughs> who who got college degrees in close reading things. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like we're, we're innocent of that. No. But what I'm no. trying to say is, like, they are not. They they do not see analysis as in and of itself valuable. Yeah. And they don't think examining deeper messages it, of these it things... It doesn't matter. It's just a dumb story is what they're saying. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and if, if, you know, if that's how you see it, that's fine. Because it's not like you're you're necessarily being harmed. But you're not going to go I'm out not saying it's a worse experience. Or something like that or whatever, yeah. right? But, <laughs> you know, and, and, and the video games are a funny thing, too. Because they're, you know, this, um, you know, nobody making a video... Well, I guess nowadays we have... Um, what, what's it called when the game is made by an individual you download it on your playstation and it's like ooh, it's classier because it's what's the term indie? i'm looking for an indie, indie game thank you sorry i can't believe okay. i'm blanking it's, on that it's, it's fine um which have more of like a kind of a pretension of being art or maybe they are art, or oh, whatever yeah. you want to say right um but you know by and large when games like this are made it's, it's just you know you're being commissioned write this kind of story for our game kind of sort of or whatever right and um the writers aren't even necessarily kind of thinking about it that much in like, oh, is, <laughs> is my game monstrous or not or whatever, right? They're just kind of throwing something together around the general idea that they've been told the game will be about or whatever, right? Well, I I think that's true. I yeah, think that's and I'm not saying we shouldn't hold them in judgment for that. We, you know, there's always room for criticism, right? I mean, there, there's, Well, I've you know, interviewed that's people who write video games and who have talked about, yeah. like, the, the struggle of trying to create a narrative... Mm -hmm. When literally the people higher up at the company, yeah. their only their only caveat, their only suggestion is you have four minutes of cutscenes. <laughs> you can have as much yeah. story as yeah. you want, but we are only paying for four minutes of cutscenes. And and it was easier probably to project a story on something when it had less content. Like when you look back at like this is stuff you find funny about old Atari games, right? About the ridiculous plots. Some of them. Yeah, like what was it? Um, what's the one where you're? The fly? I believe you're talking about Yars Revenge. Yars Revenge, a super evolved house plot. <laughs> yeah, and it's Yars Revenge. You're just a square, really. But like back then, like you know, there's like one programmer, and they would come up with a, a story and try to give it like some kind of substance. And oh, to yeah. the point, that seems very funny. Or whatever, right? But it, it's almost like that's sort of still the attitude, sort of, or whatever, right? Even to though the games extent. have reached this level where there's cinema level stuff or whatever. Yeah, right? and, you know? but depending on the kind of game, you're right. That some of them still have that feel about it where they just don't. We slapped on a kind of a plot or whatever, don't think too much about it. Yet at the same time, we want it to be like a movie, so do think about it. You know? Yeah, <laughs> right? And there's they, this they kind of They want weird... to have their cake and eat it too. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, want yeah. to not be taken seriously, but they also want people to admit they're as good as movies. Yeah, now, admittedly, as you say, like these are the products of like multiple, like, you know, people, you know, yeah. some of whom are, you know, uh, more artistic. I, I just and... think it's, um, and maybe it's strange, mm -hmm. but I think um, it's interesting that I consider this game to be the high point of justified violence in video games. Right. Was made by the same company <laughs> that makes... The low point of... The low point of it, and which is, in fact, and they're set in the same world. Yeah, yeah, in, in theory, these are taking They're place in the same world. They're even theoretically right? taking place in the same world. Yeah, which is weird, because it's like you get that tonal separation thing. Well, that, someone is know. trying to build, in the Grand Theft Auto um, San Andreas engine, mm -hmm. they've, they've been able to mod the world. Mm -hmm. So they're taking all of the assets for all of the maps, and they want to build a consistent world where you can drive from Liberty City down to Vice City, oh, over to San Andreas, and here's the kick, you'll also be able to go to Carson City. That would be amazing. And the Bullworth Academy from Bully. Wow, because oh, Bully's also set in that world, too. Oh, Bully is also set in that world. Oh, that's fascinating. That'd be amazing if they do that. I, yeah, and yeah. I don't think you can go to, even though I suspect <laughs> it is set in the same world, you cannot go to um, uh, the the states set in... Um, um, which one? Uh, Red Dead Revolve. Oh, of course, yeah. That and I be, think it's just because yeah, Red Dead Revolve was update. never released on PC, okay. so they just don't have the assets. Right, right. So, yeah, uh, because of a glitch, because I saved before... Um, I saved before I flipped the switch. Mm -hmm. uh, the switch is now not flippable because okay. I died. Uh, so it doesn't, I mean, we were at the end of the level anyway, so it right. didn't really matter. But uh, so, all right, can I get, can I get some closing thoughts on Manhunt for you? <laughs> we've had a, we've had a long digressive conversation about 
ethics in video games. Sure. Okay, my feelings are this. Manhunt, um, it's a very violent game. I don't think it's going to make anyone go on a murdering rampage. <laughs> I mean, if they did, they were probably had problems to begin with. And th that's, that's my general true. feeling about most things, you know, in that you know, in that kind of in conversation, field, be it video yes. games or violent movies or whatever, right? But <laughs> um, it would just be, you know, today's excuse or something, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, it's pretty gruesome and, oh, uh, you okay. know, it's, it's messed up or whatever, right? But, um, you know, I, I don't hold you in contempt for liking this game. I totally get its appeal. And as, as we've just come to the conclusion, it is more morally justifiable <laughs> than a lot of other video games. And I like those games. Like, I'm not condemning yeah. Grand Theft Auto, you I know, as too. a whole. Yeah, I'm glad they, they exist or whatever. And as I said, I have this kind of weird mental shield where I'm like, ah, it's just all sarcastic or something like that. Yeah. And I, so I, I, or they're just dumb people made it or whatever, right? You know, and I just sort of wash it away in that way or whatever right okay. but um um yeah of course you know still room to criticize it right but anyway but um so and and more power to doing that i say but um yeah that's my feelings i guess right okay. and um yeah thank you so much for taking part in this night dog you're welcome all right um that's that's been the manhunt project part seven uh join back here when i'm gonna have a bunch of people over we're all gonna sit on the couch we're gonna have the microphone for us and we're gonna see the last level of Manhunt all together as a big crowd. <laughs> kind of experience the denouement of the game. So uh, look forward to that. All right. Um, I've been Hidden Object Guru. This was Night Dog. I will see you elsewhere on the playlist.